Okay, so what I'm talking about today is unequal funding for school districts again. And um, I just want you guys to think about like what we have here and what other school districts may be lacking. That could be educated, involved teachers and advancements in technology and the number of students that are actually graduating from high school. Um, how is this relevant to us? Well, the area we live in, the families we come from, this all dictates the kind of education that we're going to get. I believe that no matter where you are or who you are and where you come from, you should be able to get the same education as anybody else in the country, especially if you're going to a public school, because that's what it's all about. Um, some of the things I'm going to be talking about today are the failure of the government and its um, promise of equivalence, and also um, how these failures can be fixed by making laws to create equal funding for districts. And finally, I'm going to be talking about the chance for every, how important it is for the chance for everyone to get the same kind of education. Um, so as Americans, what we pride ourselves on is the American dream. And our motto is, you, if you work hard, you can get whatever you want. But really, that isn't true. Um, and it was said by a French author, Alex Trevelle, I do not mean that there is any lack of wealthy individuals in the U.S., but wealthy... Um, wealth circulates with inconceivable, inconceivable rapidity, and experience shows that it is rare to find two succeeding generations in full enjoyment of it. Um, we actually, we don't really realize how detrimental it is that we're such an uneven country, and um, what he means by this is extreme wealth will eventually cause harm, cause harm to our structure. There's a chart. This is what people think America's wealth distribution actually looks like. Not as equitable, clearly, but for me, even this still looks pretty great. Yes, the poorest 20 to 30 percent are starting to suffer quite a lot compared to the ideal, and the middle class is certainly struggling more than they were, while the rich and wealthy are making roughly 100 times that of the poorest Americans, and about 10 times that of the still healthy middle class. Sadly, this isn't even close to reality. Here is the actual distribution of wealth in America. The poorest Americans don't even register. They're down to pocket change. And the middle class is barely distinguishable from the poor. In fact, even the rich between the top 10 and 20 percentile are worse off. Only the top 10 percent are better off. And how much better off? So much better off that the top 2 to 5 percent are actually off the chart at this scale. And the top 1%, this guy, well, his stack of money stretches 10 times higher than we can show. Here's his... So that's just to get you better, like, acclimated with what reality is. Okay, and um, so what I was talking about, the American dream, and this is basically what it is. If you work hard, you can get whatever you want, but that's actually not a reality. Um, in his second inaugural address, President Obama stated that we are true to our creed when a little girl born into the bleakest poverty knows that she has the same chance to succeed as anybody else because she is an American, she is free, and she is equal, not just in the eyes of God, but also in our own. Um, actually, the U.S. has the least equality, equality out of any developed country in the world, and like I said, it's different from what we actually think it is. And all of this is related to unequal education, because as you know, foundation is education, and that's how we get better. Okay, so I've like beaten down on the country pretty hard, but this is these are ways that we can fix it. The first way is to implement equal education funding laws, and this would include how would we go about this? So this is like a school district would be able to dictate the money that they use instead of the state telling them how to use it. And this would also cut costs. 
and as Gordon says, says lack of control for individual schools can limit effectiveness and, compar and comparability. So if we have these obscene um, budgets for schools, and then what are the other schools left with? Nothing. So I'm just going to... Okay, so unequal school districts, they have less graduates, they have lower income, they have high crime, and high poverty. Now, if we were to have equal funding for a public school district, then more people would graduate, more people would graduate, would be higher education, higher wages, and there would be more prosperity. So, if we have more kids that are graduating and then going off to college, we're going to in turn have a more prosperous society, and then that means that we'll be able to compete with different countries better. And it'll also decrease the poverty rate. Okay, so how are we going to go about doing this? Well, we can first thing you can do is reach out to your local representatives. Um, the best way to do this would be through a letter or email to them, and this is who they are. Our representatives are Watson, Casey, Toomey, and Fitzpatrick. The next way you can go about this is to just to have simple discussions with your peers or parents. Um, talking can do a lot because it'll stimulate conversation and make people want to make change. So in conclusion, I believe that no matter what district you're in, you should be able to have the same education as everyone else. Um, and it shouldn't matter where you're from or what kind of family you grew up in. And I'll leave you with this quote. It's from Abraham Lincoln. It is best to leave each man free to acquire poverty as fast as he can. Some will get wealthy. I don't believe in a law preventing a man from getting rich, but we do wish to allow the humblest man an equal chance to get rich with everyone else.